Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome back to Drinking Out Loud, where I am here to tell you all about last week's Indie Showcase 7, where we revealed and released a whole suite of brand new whiskies. So I believe six of these whiskies are uh, were being launched at that tasting. Some of them still have some stock left. Um, and uh, some people at that event filled out this. Now, if you've not been to one of our events, you might not recognize this, but if you have, you will recognize this as our scorecards. We got some good scores in for these whiskies, and I'm about to show you the results of that, uh, that scoring, and also my impressions of each of these whiskies as well. So, starting off, of course, with number one, I get to nickname these. Um, that's that's part of the thing. So when I do an indie showcase, I don't reveal anything. The book is empty on the inside. I've got one here, actually. All you get is, uh, for number one, I called it Scary Spiced. Um, because it was scary spice, and there may be a bit of a musical theme as well. So, what was scary spiced, and what did everyone think of it? Well, it was a brand new independent blending house, actually. Not uh, not just a, a bottler, it's a blending house. That uh, I am very excited to announce that we actually not only have this, but two others launching in the store right now. And uh, it's, it's quite wonderful. It is turntable. Yeah, have you come across these guys? Yeah, probably not. Well, it's created by uh, uh, a group of people who are actually veterans of the Scotch whiskey industry. They've worked with several distilleries in the past. And uh, much like sort of Compass Box did to, uh, about 23 years ago now, they got a little bit sick and tired of dealing with the same companies again and again and again and wanted to branch out and be creative and do whatever the hell they wanted. And that's what they've done here. And they've also gone sort of a little bit of the same direction as Compass Box in that sense, because they actually list exactly what is in each blend. So this is called Track 3, Purple Haze. Now we also have Track 1 and 2, and they're all sort of song-themed. Um, I can't remember what Track 1 is. Track 2 is Firestarter. I haven't tried it yet. I really want to. Um, and it's my first time trying this at the tasting. I really... I was really quite impressed. Uh, well, in, before the tasting, so I could name it, of course. Um, so this will technically be my fourth time trying it now, because I tried it once before the tasting, once at each of the two different tasting dates, and now again. Let's see if the impression it left on me the previous three times is the same as it is now. Um, I'll read a little bit from it. Our story starts with two brothers, a serious love of whiskey, and a backing track of creativity. With over 20 years of experience between us, it was time to carve our own path together, to flip the record on ordinary, and create a new generation of blended Scotch whiskey. No shortcuts, no limits. Great whiskies require quality spirit, excellent casks, and time. We strike the right chords, creating harmonized blends from storied casks, because for us, crafting excellence is in whiskey is a true passion. Welcome to Turntable Blending House, from Gordon and Alistair Stevenson, who you may recognize. Uh, they've worked with um, companies like Pulteney and Belle Blair, and yeah, that, that whole portfolio in the past. And then it says, like I said, the exact breakdown on the back. Not only does it say the distillery, it says the percentage and also the cast type and what they think it adds to the blend. So 42% of this is a Craig Ellicke from an Oloroso Sherry Butt, uh, which they say lends uh, bitter, dark chocolate notes. Then 44% of this was a Balmenic from a PX Sherry Punchin, which says uh, dates, as the tasting note it adds. Then 14% is an X Sherry Barrel Inver Gordon, with uh, red fruits being the leading note there. And yeah, all Sherry casks. Right? Oloroso, PX, and then one unnamed. Um, we've at least got a butt, a punch, and a barrel. So three different types of cask as well, which is really interesting. Um, like I said, I was really intrigued by the whole idea of these. Uh, bottle at 46% as well, which is nice for a blended whiskey. You want to see what the bottle looks like? Ooh. It looks like that. Nice, isn't it? Or I think so, at least. Ah. <sighs> You know what? I, I recently did some recording sessions in Vancouver. Um, you might you might have seen uh, the start of that. I've done a whole series of them uh, of coming up for our um, in-store drams with a very special guest. And uh, he started a new trend, which I'm going to continue. Apparently that's the thing I do now. <laughs> All right. I don't keep the boxes. I don't know if you do at home. Let me know in the comments. Do you keep the boxes? Um, I go one step further. If there's like foil or something over the cap, I, I get rid of the hats and scarves as well. I, I like a nice clean neck. Um, yeah, lovely color, isn't it? It's all natural. Um, no chill filtration either. 
I think, uh, stepping in the right direction right off the uh, get-go. And I can't wait to see what wonderful tracks they're going to release. So, whiskey number one. Ooh. I was about to smell an empty glass there. I don't know what's going on. All right. Much better. Ah. Cool. Yeah, nice. Big red fruit on the nose today. So here are some of the uh, some of the notes that uh, the people who tasted this live in person with me at our event uh, got on this. As we, I asked the entire room. We got. Uh, oh yeah, this is something I didn't know existed. Canned molasses bread. Apparently, it's Boston brown bread. It's like some kind of bread, brown molasses bread that comes in a can. Uh, I don't know if it's from Boston or maybe for Boston. I'm not sure the specifics there. Sounds wild, but apparently it reminded some members of that. Not, not only one as well, which was the surprising thing. More than one person had heard of that. Um, I can't read my own writing there. Not sure what that says. Uh, baking spice. Uh, sweet, but also tannic. Uh, caraway seeds. Pecans. Um, uh, walnut skins. Uh, raisins. Spiced orange peel black pepper, and uh, pike. Pike? Oh, pike place coffee blend. That's right. Hmm. Nice. Hmm. Same as it was on the nose, on the palate, getting a lot of those red fruits today, which apparently is coming from the grain whiskey. Don't ignore the grain. Hmm. But yeah, it does have... Uh, cinnamon, orange, baking spice, you know, clove, cardamom kind of a flavor profile. It's And it's very approachable. That 46% uh, makes it just a pleasure to, to to drink. Like, it's not it's not aggressive. You don't have to add water to it. Um, it's just nice, easy, good flavors. Um, I'm I'm impressed. I think as a blend goes, they've they've really um, hit the style. This is a very good traditional blended whiskey done really, really well. Mm. So this, like I said, this is available. We've got, uh, oh, I bought in a couple of cases, so there's definitely some left. Um, and we've also got number one and number two as well. Regular price, 126, right? Not bad, uh, which means with 10% off, which if you're watching this uh, shortly after the release of this video, you can get it for 10% off if you're a Dram Association member at strathlicker.com. You can get it for 113.40, pretty, pretty decent. And if you're watching this a little bit later on, and you missed that 10% discount window and you're wishing, oh, I wish I could get 10% off of this. Well, you still can because you can sign up for Strath Premium. Strath Premium gives you 10% off all of our whiskeys all of the time um, and also gives you a discount on the tasting. So you can also come to the next tasting and get $10 off. Sign up for that online as well. It's just, uh, I think, $16 a month. Mm. And it includes all of the in-store drop-in drams as well. So... Most of those, um, you get at least $10 of value from the drop-in drams. You get, if you go to one tasting a month, you save $10 there. It's already negative $4 to sign up for this club. Uh, and if you get that extra 5% discount on a couple of bottles, you are saving a lot of money by joining Strath Premium. Also, if you don't live in Victoria and you need things shipped, you can save a lot on postage as well. We have flat rate shipping options for our Strath Premium members. Anyway, enough shameless promotion. On to whiskey number two, which I called Dram Pineapple Apple Dram. And if you don't get that reference, you're already on YouTube. After you finish this video, search for Pen Pineapple Apple Pen, and uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and Dram Pineapple Apple Dram is none other than a whiskey I've just mentioned, or a whiskey company I've just mentioned a lot. Compass Box, the original sort of big independent blending house that shook the world in the year 2000 with John Glazer's uh, absolutely excellent hedonism blend. This is the second edition of The Circle and is really interesting because uh, it has a bit of a, an interesting theme to it. So the circle, number one, excellent whiskey. Uh, the idea was they got together with uh, some of the best bartenders and uh, industry people around the world to create a brand new whiskey, and the winner got to make the whiskey with the team at Compass Box, and it was, it was really bloody good. This time they did the same thing, but it just so happened that that winner had a, a special... A special ability, I guess. Um, I'm not sure how else to describe it. They had synesthesia, and they wanted to create a whiskey that was the color of coral, like this, the color of the box here. And uh, that's what they set out to do. So this is this is the a whiskey that tastes like the color coral. 
And as I say the word Carl, I can't help but think of uh, Rick in The Walking Dead, who can't pronounce Carl and would keep saying Carl for some reason. Um, great show. So, excellent whiskey. Again, has a full breakdown of uh, what's in it, but uh, you have to go online for some of the extra details of this one. But, again, of course, beautiful bottle, because that's what Compass Box does really well, is their bottle. I mean, they do whiskey really well as well. It's not the only thing they do. One thing that Compass Box does is an absolutely stunning presentation, and uh, excellent. Um, and they do have a breakdown on the back. So this is 50.4% Glen Elgin from a uh, previously, primarily recharged barrel, sorry. 17.3% uh, Spayburn from a refill hogshead. 14.3% blended Scotch whiskey. Ah, so this is a blended scotch. This is not a blended malt because it has a little bit of grain, tiny bit of grain. 14.3% of this is a previous Compass Box blended uh, whiskey. Don't know how much of that was grain. Probably not very much. So very, very small amount of this is grain. Uh, then we've got 13.5% of tea and from a first fill sherry butt. Oh, I should have mentioned that um, blended whiskey was primarily from sherry butts. Uh, Linkwood, 2.3% from a refill puncheon, an STR barrique. And then 2.2% Ardmore. You know how I love an Ardmore. Um, and it does actually come across a little bit. You don't need much smoke to be able to perceive it in a blend. All right, so this is a circle, or as I called it, Grand Pineapple Apple Dram. And the oh, my glasses over here. Already got glasses over here. All right. Oh, I, I am very sorry. I never actually told you what score the turntable got, did I? Well, let me pour myself a dram in a circle, and I'll tell you the score of both of these together. Score them in pairs. Pull myself a little heavy there, sorry. Alright. So. The turntable. First ever turntable in the Dram Association. Came in strong. I think this is a very, very good score, for, uh, especially for a blended whiskey. This is 88.21. 88.21 is what our members scored this. Um, and that is under the fruity and spicy category, because I also get to vote on which category it goes under. Um, but that is the context for those of you who aren't familiar with our scoring system. At the bottom here, there's a little guide. Zero to 60 is awful. 60 to 70 is bad. So it's, if it's even a whiskey worth bottling, it usually starts at 70. 70 to 80 is okay. 80 to 85 is good. 85 to 90 is great. Uh, 90 to 95 is awesome. And 95 plus is amazing. Um, and we've had a few amazing, amazing whiskeys being scored. Uh, I think the highest score we've had is about 26, 20, maybe 27. I, I can't remember. It's the Klein Leash um, Select Reserve is the highest score so far. Um, yeah. This solidly fits into the higher end of great, which, as I said, great start. Uh, the compass box, however, which I'm about to uh, taste again, um, got a 91.63 and is a fresh and floral. And I'm not sure about this, but fresh and floral whiskies tend not to score as well in our club for some reason. So this might be amongst the highest ever fresh and floral style um, whiskey, which is kind of cool. I'm totally getting apples again. Not not many other people really like clung on to apples as the key thing for this whiskey, but yeah, apples and pineapples. Very tropical. All right, so what did our club also find? So the, those in the room found baiju. Someone someone thought this tasted like really high quality baiju, which is interesting. Um, pineapple, orange, guava, or pog, as they call it. It's a, a, a popular mixed fruit juice. Um, also, feijoa juice from New Zealand. Uh, fresh apple scented, um, apple scented something, um, overripe banana, dental floss, <laughs> baked apricot, um, ah, plantation pineapple rum, uh, the Stiggins Fancy, uh, smoky peaches, and a little bit of beeswax. Yeah, kind of all over the place. But nice big complex, but those sort of tropical fruit notes and those sort of fresh, vibrant fruit notes are really what's coming across strongly here. Hmm. Yeah. Apples and pears. Ooh. Baked apple today on that. Ooh. Damn, that's a good whiskey. Yeah. Again, 91.63 for, for a blended whiskey that is um, from this flavor category is a very good score for our club. So congratulations. Um, it's a compass box. A solid showing. Oh. 
Shall we move on to number three? What was our third whiskey? All right. Our third whiskey, I called it Very Orange Pico Tea, and it is, once again, a debuting independent bottler in our Indie Showcase series. It's the first time I've ever had anything from Jean Boyer. Jean Boyer. The Gifted Stills series. So this is interesting because it's a French independent bottler who bottles whiskey for the French market. And the French generally don't enjoy cast-strength whiskey as much as the rest of the world seems to. So it's not cast-strength, even though it is a small batch single malt. Um, in fact, a single cast single malt. The other thing is, because it's not cast-strength, because it's actually 43, I think, yeah, 43, they don't chill filter it, so it's actually a little bit cloudy. If it gets cold, it'll get cloudy. And we're in Canada, so at some point in the journey across here, it, it got cold. Um, and that's unfiltered. You know, it's unfiltered, beautiful whiskey uh, the way it should be. And I kind of like the fact that it's cloudy and doesn't mind being cloudy. I think that's good. Be cloudy and proud. Cloud proud. Excellent. So, Jean Boyer, it, uh, most of this is in French. And look, oh, I lost my poppy. I'll, I'll grab that after. Um, most, uh, most strangely, uh, both days we actually had some native French speakers uh, in the audience, so they did some translation for me. And it doesn't really say much other than what I've just already told you. But interesting that it's almost all in French. They didn't make special labels for the Canadian market with uh, English on it. Um, yeah. Very cool. Uh, it is a Tormor, which is a distillery we very rarely see. I think the last time we saw a Tormor in the uh, Dram Association was a Cooper's Choice, I think 2018, a long time ago now. Um, and more interesting than that, it's the first time we've ever had something from this cast type, because it's a very specific cast type. It's a first fill Margot wine barrique. And as far as I'm aware, Margot is a specific sub-region of Bordeaux, and I think... Ooh... I can't remember. I think it's Cab. I think it was a Cab self-growing region for the most uh, most part. It's probably a red wine, um, from the flavor profile at least. Let's uh, revisit this Tormor, shall we? Juicy. Yeah, juicy. Appro it's appropriate, uh, the orange pico tea. Definitely on the juicy side. But there is more of a herbal, almost sort of... Um, marmalade on jam kind of a thing as well you know it's it's got mar marmalade on jam what would i say marmalade on toast let's get let's get it right you don't put marmalade on jam adam uh well, i guess you could but yeah marmalade on toast and i'm thinking like a multi-grain like toast mm, very nice so the specifics uh it was uh bottled in 2022 and distilled in 2010 it doesn't have an age statement, which is a very French thing to do. They love uh, they love vintage years in France. That's kind of their, what they're used to with cognacs and armagnacs, especially and wines. Um, so we don't know if this is eleven or twelve years old, but it's one of the two. Um, and this is uh, some of the tasting notes that our members found on this whiskey. They found unsweetened or less lightly sweetened Arizona iced tea, very uh, good wood. Oh, someone's getting a phone call. Tamiya glue, which is a brand of model glue, apparently. Pomegranate. Grain. Southern Comfort, which is, I think is a great shout. Sour cream. And then lavender shortbread. And then there's one extra tasting note, which I think is one of the most unique tasting notes I've ever had. Um, one of our members said it specifically reminded them of the hum of a speaker at a Jefferson Aeroplane concert in the late 70s. Cheers. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, not sure I'm getting the speaker hum, but I like this one a lot. I think it's weird though, because this, this is the lowest scoring whiskey of today's lineup, I think. I'm fairly sure. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's by no stretch of the imagination a bad whiskey. Uh, if you're a fan of whiskey that is already at drinking strength and not uh, going to blow your face off at cast strength, this is a really good whiskey. And frankly, like, it's better than the majority of official bottlings in the same category. Um, it's more interesting. That cast type adds a lot. Um, if you're going to pick up a whiskey that's 43% and around a dozen years old, this is a damn fine choice. And I would definitely choose this over a lot of the, you know, the big name single malts. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's got a really nice finish, actually. That multi-grain toast is coming through a lot, actually, this time. Yeah, especially on the finish. Nutty as well today, which I didn't really get before. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Uh, so they scored this one. 86 point. One, two, and they classed it as malty and dry, which I thought was a, quite a surprise. I thought they'd probably go more for the fruity side of things, but malty and dry is the, uh, the the people have spoken. And you can get this regular price, 167.74, 10% off right now, of course, 148.27. Lovely. All right, our fourth whiskey today, I named Fleur de Pommier, which I regret naming that. As I mentioned before, there was two native French speakers and I probably butchered the pronunciation. But I do not regret bringing this whiskey in because it is lovely. Um, this is a big return, in a sense, because this is a brand that we used to carry a lot at the Straff, but the importer um, stopped importing uh, at the beginning of COVID. And we now have a new importer, finally, who is uh, bringing these whiskies in. Welcome back to the Straff. Cooper's Choice. Yes, it's good to have you. So this is... I've got some Halloween decorations stuck to it. Uh, this is a Cooper's Choice Linkwood from 2011. And we, we do love a Linkwood, but this is a particularly special Linkwood because if you look at that green bar at the bottom, this is a Linkwood from a Calvados cask. And we've never had anything from a Calvados cask before. I think uh, we have once had a compass box that actually had a little bit of Calvados blended into it, but not actually anything from straight up from a Calvados cask. But yeah, I think this is a damn, a damn fine whiskey. I was very impressed with it. Let's see if I'm impressed with it again. Uh, straight off the bat, I'll tell you the score. 94.78. Very nice. All right. <laughs> and I just realized that this is also being categorized as a fresh and floral. So uh, it's definitely the Dram Pineapple Apple Dram, which I said might be one of the highest, um, was definitely knocked down one already by this one, uh, which may, it's almost... It's probably very, very likely to be the highest rated fresh and floral, I think, which is pretty unique. Hmm. Calvados cask. I think that was on the list of the most recent additions from the SWA as to things that you could, you know, finish a whiskey in or age a whiskey in at all. Uh, tequila was on that list as well, which is one of the reasons you're seeing a lot of tequila cask things pop up now because it's only just become legal. Yeah. Great whiskey. So let's see what, uh, what the specs are. It's 52.5. This is cast strength. It's a single cast, one of 318 bottles. Uh, it's 11 years aged and uh, finished in the Calvados cask. Didn't spend its entire time in there. Love me some Cooper's Choice stuff. They pick some really unique things. And I don't know how they get some of the stuff that they get. They're a bit of an enigma of an independent bottler. Like We even had an Ardbeg once from these guys. It was called Kill Norton, but it was an Ardbeg. Wild, isn't it? Um, and... This is unlike any Linkwood I've ever had, and I've had a lot of Linkwoods. So, our panel found... I mean, I found our, uh, apple blossom, fleur de pommier. Um, sweet yellow peppers. Autumn leaves, mangoes, candy corn candy, which uh, this is the day after Halloween that I'm actually filming this, so... Fitting. Uh, ozone. Uh, cornstarch. Um, those things that I don't know how to pronounce, because I've never had one, but those special donuts you get in New Orleans, they're... Beg, beg nets, beg, beg, beg net, I, one of those, um, a hint of apple and a light piece of, uh, a lightly, nope, I don't know what that says, light medium char, light medium char, cool, I should, I'm always scribbling these down really quickly as people are shouting answers at me, I should take some time and make sure I can actually read them again later, oh yeah. Yeah, this is this is a really unique one. It has like some interesting like peppery vegetal notes, but also that for floral fruitiness as well, like apples and cells and apple blossom. I assume comes from the Calvados. It, I mean, I might be being tricked into thinking that apples are at the forefront of the flavor profile here simply because I feel like they should be with a Calvados cask. But oh, they're definitely there for me. Whether it's a uh, whether it's a bit of a trick or not, it's uh, oh, it's lovely.
little 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 touch of cucumber today as well, which is an interesting note. Normally I get cucumber on Royal Brackler's almost exclusively, but nice to see a little bit of cucumber there. And I want to say, like, it reminds me of a Tokai wine, but a lot less sweet. Imagine it's like a dry Tokai. Hmm. I don't know if they make those. I'll have to ask Megan. Hmm. That's, that's very pleasant. Yeah, very happy with that. 94.78, as I said. Hell of a score. Um, we do still have some more available in store and online. It is 191.22. Um, is the regular price, so we're 10 percent off. One seventy-two ten. All right, we're on to the back row where big flavors are coming out to play. Next up, we've got Santa's Bribe. Yes, and in if you are in the UK, you have a very different bribe than the North Americans, which apparently put milk and cookies out. In the UK, you get mince pie and sherry. And today's Santa's Bribe is actually a Tia Nini from G and M. Love TNN, love GNM, love Sherry. This is astoundingly good. In fact, this is the uh, only one of today's which is actually already sold out. Um, I do have another cask, I a cask, well, I wish, another case on the way. Um, but yeah, this, this one was a, a big hit. All right. So. It is 55.9 ABV from 2009, aged for 13 years. Tina Nick, of course, a Highland whiskey. Um, for those not familiar, think Kleinleash with a twist. Um, it is a single cask of 248 bottles, and it's bloody good. Yeah, it is. Um, what else did our group find on it? We found a brown sugar, butter tarts, um, sugar that's burnt on the bottom of... Um, uh, the tin foil when you're making the butter, tart, butter tarts in the oven specifically, actually. Uh, black pepper. Um, happy plums. Why they're happy? Not sure. Um, old wood. Candied salmon. Uh, gingerbread. Toffee apple. Molasses. Uh, the uh, the ideal concept of figgy pudding. Um, oxidized sherry. Fig newtons. A, touch, a very light touch of sulfur. Um, and sucked from the ch coal sucked from the chimney. Kind of fitting for Santa, actually, isn't it? Good excuse to have this one again. Okay. I'll put you on this side. I'll, I'll keep a little divide so you can still see me. There we go. Hmm. Oh yeah. In true G&M style, I don't know how they do it, anything sherried from Gordon McPhail tastes like half as much again in age. I can't add more. It's 19 years old, I swear it tastes almost 30. This is, what, 11, 12? Tastes, tastes like it's 20 to me. 13. Yeah, 13 year old tastes like a 20 year old. I think that's a good rule of thumb anytime you get a G&M sherry cask. It, it always feels one and a half times its age. I don't know why, I don't know how they do it. Oh. So this scored a little bit higher, actually, than the Fleur de Pommier, um, which I think scored a lot of points because it surprised a lot of people. It was a flavors that you weren't expecting. Rich and Round is um, a commonly high-scoring flavor profile in our club. They scored at 94.87, so 0 0.9 points, 0 0.09 points, sorry, uh, higher than uh, Fleur de Pommier. So very close between them. Uh, this one was 189.48, and... Uh, that makes it 170.53 with the 10% off. Oh, yeah. 2009 Tiananich got my attention. 2019 Tiananich from a sherry cask really got my attention. Um, and actually, I almost didn't bring this in because we have a lot of Tiananich. And uh, I was persuaded by trying it. Uh, I got a sample of this from the agent and I was like, I can't not bring this in. And I'm very glad I did. And I'm be I will shortly have more. <laughs> Hmm. You know what? Maybe T and Inic should be our next single cask. If I can try and find a GNM single cask for next year, I'll see if I've got a T and Inic. I think that'd be a solid choice. Hmm. All right. Hmm. So, 
on to the final three, which are all petered. And all three of them are in the smoky and earthy. They were all voted into the smoky and earthy profile. So Pete's, uh, well, it's not the only thing. It's the predominant thing on all three of these. And we're starting off with the one where I think Pete is the least predominant thing. Um, not that it's the least predominant thing. It's the least of, as they go, this has more of the other flavors than the other ones do. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. I don't quite, can't quite figure out how to get the words out. And this is a bit of a surprise hit. Um, this sold the most bottles um, on the day. Right, I know I said that this one was sold out. That's because we only had one case. This one, I think we had five cases, and we have a lot less than five cases now. Mactala, a surprise hit from the guys at Morrison. Um, this is the special edition Fezil Pedro Jimenez cask Mactala. Mactala is a brand where they don't say where it's from. We know it's a single malt, we know it's an Isla, and that's all we know. But it is from a company called Morrison, and there used to be a company called Morrison Bowmore, so there, there might be something to that. But they also, there's no reason why they always have to stick to the same distillery. We have no idea if they do. This could be a Bowmore, could be a Lafroy, could be a Kalila. Honestly, because Pedro Jimenez is in the mix, it's really hard to tell, because the character of the distillate is somewhat masked by the character of the cask a lot in this one. But it's a damn good masking, as, uh, uh, as, uh, as the score will reveal. Yeah. I do love the purple color on the label as well. I feel bad yeeting this one behind me. Yes, I use the word yeet for anyone who is over... Well, I guess I'm 35 and I understand it. So anyone over, over 36, uh, that is a, a, a word that the youngsters are using to mean like toss. Uh, why? No idea. But it is fun to say, so uh, yeet. Yeah, um, I think I, I think I used that word correctly. If you are um, one of the younger generation people watching this video, hopefully over 19 uh, or 21 in the States or 18 in the UK or 16 in Europe or, or you know, whatever the legal age to watch videos about alcohol is, um, tell me if I eat it wrong. Uh, if, I, if I'm eating incorrectly, I need to know. I don't want to lose my street cred. Um, do people use street cred anymore? Is that a thing? Oh, beautiful colour. So my uh, my colleague, uh, Andrew, picked up a bottle of this for him and his wife's anniversary, which is actually the day after the tasting. He, he liked it so much. Um, yeah, bold, complex, and peaty. Um, they say uh, a sweet, smoky symphony of burnt toffee, stewed berries, and maritime smoke. The influence of PX cherry casks brings a rich, fruity sweetness, as well as added structure and depth to this smoky... Isla Mott. It's 54.6, and that's something I've not really seen much from Mactala. Cask strength. They pulled out the big guns for the uh, Fejil Isla Festival. Good on them. Oh, yeah. And you know what this reminds me of instantly on the nose? This reminds me of the Lagavulin Distillers Edition, which is high praise, because that's a great bloody whiskey. One thing that this doesn't have is an age statement, but it's not that kind of whiskey. I don't care how old this is. This is not, age is not what makes this whiskey good. It's the, it's the distillate and the cask that make this whiskey good, not the maturation length. Mmm. You know, my official guest today on distillate, I think Kalila. I think this might be a PX cask Kalila. I think. And I do love Piazza Cascalila, so you'll, as you'll find out in another video launching this week. Mm. Mm. So, what did those in the room think of this? What did, what tasting notes did the uh, Dram Association find for this one? Uh, a Colombian ham pastry. Not sure, not sure there. Uh, also, I should have mentioned, I called this one when ham met jam. And it's a very apt tasting note from this still. Um, old school pencil shavings. Dried out prosciutto, campfire, a sweet finish with uh, candied bacon, red barn double smoked bacon, black pudding, and hot dog water. In a good way. <laughs> it must have been in a good way, because uh, this, yeah, this is the highest scoring of today's whiskies. This scored 95.21, putting it 
in just a little bit into the amazing category, um, which is very bloody impressive for a independently bottled mystery isla malt. Um, so kudos to Morrison. That is a damn fine achievement. Congratulations. Um, it puts puts you in really good company. It really does. Oh, it's a sherry butt. Uh, they had 1,840... No, I'm, I'm on the wrong page. I, you almost found out how, how many... Well, you did find out how many the next one is. Um, this is a, a PX cask of some kind. We don't actually know. And we don't know how many uh, were bottled. It might it might say somewhere on the internet. I couldn't find any information on the bottle or the, or the box. Probably a fairly decent amount, though. Because... Um, I didn't. I didn't get the exclusive on this. I got four or five cases, and I didn't bring. I didn't get all of it in BC, and it is available at some other spots as well. So, the fact that that much of it made it to BC means it probably had a pretty big worldwide distribution, which is exciting because it's a bloody good whiskey. And if you're watching this video somewhere else in the world, and you're not a you're not from Victoria, BC, or somewhere in Canada, and you can't buy it from the Strath, which if you can, you should, um, you might find it at your local store. Um, and I recommend doing so if you if you can find it at your local store, especially at the price, because it's one sixty nine forty eight. Yeah, which on sale with ten percent off makes it one fifty two fifty three, and that's Canadian dollars here in Canada. Local pricing might vary, but that for a whiskey that just scored over ninety five points is phenomenal. Uh, so congratulations, Morrison. You, yeah, I'm. Very, very impressed. And funnily enough, I'm also very impressed with the next two whiskies, which are also both from Morrison. Um, let's see what's up next, shall we? The next whiskey, I called it uh, Maple Bacon Pancakes. And as I let slip earlier, there was 1,840 of these, and they all come from Sherry Butts. <sighs> this one does have an age statement. This I'm very excited about, because we got every single bottle of this that came to the country uh, as far as, as far as i was told at least by the importers it's a ben nevis yes it is i know how much people love ben nevis especially the young sherry cask peated ben nevis and this is exactly that this is a 2015 7 years aged ben nevis and it's not cast strength which honestly helps keep the price down because it's a bargain of a whiskey but it's still 47.5 which is more than enough to get the uh get the hairs curl the hairs curling it's uh it's good it's very full flavored and uh i am really excited to be sharing it with you i actually planned to release this months and months ago but haven't had the opportunity yet and uh I'm very happy to be fully releasing this now if you're thinking it feels familiar uh well we did have a a different morrison uh, ben Nevis from a sherry cask a couple of years ago, which was very highly rated and uh, also uh, sold out really quickly because I only got one or two cases. This, like I said, I got a lot of. Um, we have plenty of this whiskey, which is great news because I'm more than happy for this to be available for a while. What did our uh, esteemed members think of this one. Well, they found Monte Cristo sandwiches. Ah, um, and this was this was a specific memory from me on the day. It smelled like the cupboard in my high school where they kept the Bunsen burners in the chemistry labs. Raisins, ouzo, sauerkraut, burnt apple spices, uh, raw honey, and sourdough donuts. <laughs> oh, interesting. I apparently hit the nail on the head with my maple bacon pancakes because I didn't read the official tasting notes, but there are actually some written on the back label, which I just ignored. Um, a stack of American pancake, rashes of smoked bacon, smothered in sweet, sticky maple syrup. Huh. Huh. Neat. I swear I didn't peek. I swear that that all came from me tasting it. That is absolutely ooh, pressurized. That is wild. I don't think I've ever agreed with the official tasting notes quite as much in my life. That's almost exactly as I described, maple, maple bacon pancakes. But yes, it also might feel familiar because we actually teased this at the Highland Games all the way back in May. So those of you who were at my tasting at the Highland Games, you actually did try this whiskey. 
and now it's available. And I'm very excited about that. Hmm. The maple is coming out at the forefront today. Yeah, bit of a heavy pour on the maple. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah. Mmm. And here comes the bacon and the pancakes. It's amazing how good Ben Nevis can be at a young age. It really is. Um, and it was the first distillery, I believe, that's, um, that was ever owned by a Japanese con uh, company, uh, the Scottish distillery, I should say. Um, and no, it's not Beam Suntory, as you might expect, because they're the big guys. This is owned by Nika and is mostly used to blend with Japanese whiskey and is found predominantly over here, at least, in Nika from the Barrel, from what I understand. And I, we very rarely see Ben Nevis in any other any other way. We, we've had a couple recently from the SNWS, and that's a, and a couple from these guys, and that's about it. That's very few and far between. They do have an official bottling. It's only available in Europe, I think. It might, might be available in the States, not sure. Definitely not available here. And from what I've heard, it's not actually very good, um, which is a shame. This is bloody excellent. All right, so what did this whiskey score? This whiskey scored 94.27. Yes, it did. You heard that right, 94.27 points for a seven-year-old. Age doesn't matter. Age is just one way of getting flavor to a whiskey. It's not that it doesn't matter, of course it does. But age is only one way of getting flavor into a whiskey, and there are many, many more. Um, yeah. For this style of whiskey, if you like big, bold flavors, this is an excellent whiskey. Also, regular price is only one forty-seven seventy-four. Yeah, and here's the real kicker. I got a lot of this. I was planning to launch it in the summer, didn't get a chance. Now I've got a lot of it, and it just so happens our spirit sale is about to start. So. Between November 9th and 16th, we're actually giving you more than 10% off of this one. We're giving you 18% off of this one. Yeah. It's going to be $120.78. Uh-huh. Um, ridiculously good price for this whiskey. I'm definitely going to be mentioning it if I manage to have time to make a video on the bargains of this year's sale. Because this is up there as probably one of the best, if not the best bargain this year. And like I said, we've got lots of it. Um, so, yeah. I very much recommend when uh, when November 9th rolls around, head to strathliquor.com, get yourself a couple of bottles. We'll be ready to pick up whenever. And uh, of course, we do ship as well. Great whiskey. Um, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal dram. from the folks at Morrison. And as I said, the last whiskey is also from the folks at Morrison. And I call this one Thomas Huxley's Miracle Tonic. Why did I call it that? Who the hell is Thomas Huxley? I shall reveal all, but first I'll reveal the whiskey. This whiskey is a Williamson. You know what that means? If you don't know what Williamson means, it's about to get even more exciting, because Williamson is a code name for the Freug. And actually, in this edition of Carmel Williamson, which is, I think, the third, maybe fourth that we've had, they actually say the Freug right there on the label. Don't know what changed, but uh, yeah, they call it Williamson from the Freug Distillery. <laughs> it's glorious. I always love it when these random indie Le Freugs show up, because they shouldn't. Uh, Le Freug stopped selling to independent bottlers years ago, uh, but I guess people stocked up. This is a 2013. It was aged for nine years. Again, it's part of the Carmore series. Uh, uh, it's part of the um, Strictly Limited series, uh, which is a sub-series of the Carmore series, I guess. 47.5 uh, ABV. 1,798 came from this uh, blend of several different hogsheads. Yeah, it's Lefroig! It's Lefroig! Yeah, it's, fair. it's exciting, because it's Lefroig. And people love Lefroig, myself included. What a dram that is. So, 
what did our uh, members find in this one? They found Romaine. Interesting. Um, oh no, not Romaine. I'm just can't. I can't read my writing. Ramune, <laughs> which is Japanese lemonade. Um, Gorgonzola, peach, um, punky wood, petrichor, burnt beeswax, uh, old butane. I think that says butane. Um, a brand new baby doll. Uh, off bug spray, but in a good way. Black felt tip marker. Uh, lots of barnyard and saddle leather. And um, uh, smoked fish. <laughs> it's about as wacky as you'd expect from a Lafroy, isn't it? Yeah, that's enough. All right. So. I am happy to report it smells about as wacky as you'd expect from a Lafroy today. Um, yeah. I'm definitely getting the fish today. It smells like um, kippers. So why Thomas Huxley? Mm, why is this his miracle tonic? Well, Thomas Huxley was actually... Um, he, was, he was known as Darwin's bulldog. He was a staunch believer in uh, Darwinism, um, the theory of evolution. But he was also a surgeon in the Navy, and uh, I've had, this had a lot of medicinal notes for me, which uh, I guess people kind of picked up on, like maybe the off-bug spray, but this was very iodine -y, which is a typical, very typical Lefroy tasting note, but also quite oceanic. Um, again, very typical Lefroy. Yeah, it's ashy. It reminds me a lot of Little Roy 10, but a little bitter. A little more bitter than Little Roy 10, which kind of it works with the rest of the flavor profile. But yeah, stronger. Different. More interesting, I think. Hmm. Again, smoky and earthy, as you might expect. Um, this one didn't score quite as well as the last two peated ones, but I think it might have just been that the other two were so good that they kind of felt that they had to mark this down a little bit more because you couldn't have that many high-scoring whiskeys in a tasting. I'm not sure. Maybe that was it. Um, and who am I to say? It's Everyone's score is individual. Um, but the average came out to 92.81, which is still very much in the awesome range, um, over halfway through the awesome range, in fact. Regular price, 191.22. And again, this is in... Our annual spirit sale, which starts on November 9th and runs through to the 16th. And we have a decent amount of this. It is going 15% off. Yes, that's right. It's 162.52 for an Indie Lafroig. Blimey. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me for the Indie Showcase. This has been an absolute wonderful little lineup. Um, Congratulations to all of the independent bottlers for scoring quite well in uh, our Dram Association scoring. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see uh, some of you at Indie Showcase 8, which I'm sure will happen at some point in 2024. Slanchevar, I will see you there, if not before.